Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you another video on our space combat prototype and today I'm just demonstrating some of the AI that I have built for our enemy ships that are flying around in space and as you can see right now they can follow me and they'll shoot at me and I have all these asteroids around that really don't have any collision detection on them at all but I uh, just wanted to have them there kind of a visual as a visual cue effectively. So one of the things that I wanted to point out is that these are really, really bad AI. There's a lot of changes to, to make to these, but we're going to cover some of the concepts I mentioned in a previous video where we were talking about using vector 3 dot signed angle and vector 3 dot angle and vector 3 dot project on plane to find the location of something relative to us, uh, to ourselves. And in this case, what I'm talking about is these AI ships. We're trying to find the player relative to those AI ships and then changing their behavior based on that. Before I show you the code that we've built for the enemy AI, I wanted to give you a visual representation of how it's actually working so that you understand as we step through those processes how we're, how we're translating that code into action. And what our ship is doing is very basic. There's a lot of ways this can be improved, but I wanted to demonstrate something that worked and was fairly obvious and didn't have a whole lot of overlap um, and there's a lot of decisions that can be made how this works to make it even better, but I kept it as simple as I felt could be possible um, to explain the concept before really digging into this. And knowing that, you could also program this and have all sorts of different methods, and it can get really complicated, but I wanted to keep it as simple as I could think um, code-wise, but still get the point across visually uh, as well. So. The first thing that we're doing is we've got these two somewhat kind of like a hemisphere and this is checking against the Y axis but also on the XY plane. So remember from the last video where we talked about angle 3 dot project on plane. So one of the points I made was an object that is off of the Y axis can be 45 degrees forward or 45 degrees backwards. Um, and 45 degrees side to side and it kind of makes a sphere around that. Well, I don't necessarily want that. I want to know if it's greater than one degree above the ship. So I want to know, okay, if it's one degree this way, um, all the way down to 180. Um, and if it is anywhere on that angle, I want to roll my ship. So my ship is going to say, find a target that is to the right, right here. And when it's anywhere on this angle on the on the XY plane, then it's going to know to roll and it's going to do this until it's within that one, you know, that one degree above. And so the other step that we do is take that target away and re reorient ourselves um, is now once it's above, it's not meeting this condition. So we're going to jump into another condition. So we're going to say if for this, so if, if it's on, you know, an absolute value, we're going to rotate it based on that value. So we're just going to apply torque whether it's in this hemisphere or this hemisphere, it's going to apply its maximum torque in that direction to face that direction where it's up. And so once the player is in this one degree range, then it's going to rotate. So this is another range we're checking if it's above us. If it's below us, it's not going to count. We're not going to count anything below us because what it should be doing, even if it's below us, is rotating. And so there's not really going to be a whole lot of complex because once it gets below us, we have to add some more complexity to our code. We have to say, okay, if it's below us, we've got to, you know, now we've got to rotate the ship the opposite way and then pitch down and things like that. And the reason I have a black dot here is because I say if it's one degree um, forward, so we're facing forward, if it's off that axis one degree forward, then we're not going to move at all. So it's actually facing us well enough to stop trying to rotate. But if it, like let's say our ship goes like this, it's down here, well the ship is going to rotate this way until it's the ship is up here and then it's going to pull up. And so that's what's happening. Oh, and I'm just demonstrating there how it would pull up or rotate down potentially. Um, it's not going to rotate down ever. It's actually always going to rotate and then pitch back to find the player. It'll never pitch forward. So we know that there's a huge limitation there because in reality, if a ship has the ability to pitch back, it also has the ability to pitch forward. It's going to use both as a function to help it find the player. Okay, so let's jump into our code. So we have void fly is where we're actually running all the enemy behavior. This is actually being called from fixed update because we're doing some rigid body calculations. And in the previous video, if you'd seen it, 
I had mentioned that there is two steps to finding the angle of something relative to a plane, um, like your XY plane or your YZ plane. And the first step was to find the projected value, the projected vector value. And the second step was to compare your angle. And so what I've done, because I might use that a lot, is I've actually created this function vector3 angle on plane. And um, that takes the vector that we are trying to, that's our target basically, and then our vector, so us, so the from to just like the angle, but then we're giving it also the plane normal, and then the orientation that we're comparing it to. So for example, we are gonna say projected vector actually equals uh, project on plane from minus two, the relative position to us, and then we're gonna run that parallel to whatever normal we give it. So it's until it hits you know, a plane perpendicular to that normal. So in this case, if we do transform dot forward, we're gonna find the vector value um, that is on our XY plane. So the reason why we do this, again, just to kind of cover that briefly, is that if you find like the angle of something against the Y axis, you could say um, get 45 degrees, but that could be 45 degrees on the Z axis and you may not want that because if you're trying to determine if we need to rotate, we only wanna know whether it's on X or Y relative to us. So by doing the projected vector, we're not gonna, you know, if it's 45 degrees on Z, straight on Z, it's gonna be zero on the XY axis or on the XY plane. So even if it is 45 degrees off the Y axis. So that's what we wanna know. Is it right in front of us? Don't count it. Um, so. Also, then we find that we take that projected vector value, so we compare it to our projected vector. We use our two orientation, which is say transform dot up, and that way we're getting the angle between that. And then our signed angle, we can actually just use that plane normal. Surprisingly, uh, this seems to match up pretty well. If we say z, you know, if we're using z forward, so transform dot forward as our normal, then everything on the right is going to be positive. Everything on the left is going to be negative. And so it's as if we're looking at it, the normal actually serves really well to get us the positive and negative, negative value. And if you think about that, if we're trying to compare it to a plane, um, like even for a turret, if we look down and we want our Z, you know, our, our transform dot forward to be zero, and we say transform dot down because we're looking down and we want to project it on the ground, um, then positive is going to be right looking down. So that's going to be like, let's say north, and then east would be positive and west would be negative. Um, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. And I think that every situation where I thought about it, using the planes normal as the axis with which we rotate all the angles uh, seems to just suit up nicely, no matter which angle I'm looking at. And so I couldn't think of a scenario where the opposite was true. So I went ahead and just removed a potential fifth va variable that wasn't needed. And you could possibly even say, you know, not need um, the uh, the two orientation of two you can you might be able to make those uh, one because you know we might just assume that the the only value we take is the from and assume that you've already calculated that um, but I went ahead and did from and two and then the orientation uh, just so I know for me it just seemed like it worked better that way so I wouldn't forget oh I need to tell it you know what am I comparing it to because it you know I might change my mind and say I want it to be down or something so. Anyway, haven't actually encountered that, but um, anyway, that's how I did it. So then we return that projected vector angle. Um, so what I did here is I obviously, I have the XY angle. So we're gonna find the, the angle of the object relative to our XY plane. So when the player is to our right, regardless of how forward or backward they are from us, if they're to our right, we're gonna rotate clockwise. And if they're to our left, we're going to rotate counterclockwise. And if they're below us, you know, whichever one they're closer to, we're going to keep rotating until they're right above us within one degree. And if our angle is greater than or equal to one F. So if the, um, if the YZ angle is, so for example, if they're up or down YZ by one degree, um, and then, and that's a that little black spot where we don't do any motion at all. Um, so if we're less than, you know, one degree F up or down or left or right, um, then we're not going to uh, move at all. The ship's just going to keep moving in that direction. So again, very simplistic, not great. And in actuality, I think this might be more, more like a square to some extent instead of a circle. Remember how there's a black circle? It might actually be more like a square um, because we're taking these uh, absolute values. It's not, I don't think it's a perfect square. I think it's kind of a curved square. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it. So 
anyway, not going to be a circle, but um, then we, uh, whichever one we do, you know, we add a relative torque, vector three dot forward. So we're turning around the forward. If we did backward, we wouldn't actually have to do negative, we, but I just did vector three dot forward. Oh, reminder. So in the last video, I said, do not use vector three dot forward, use transform dot forward. When you add relative torque on the rigid body, it does need to be vector three dot forward because if it doesn't, it's gonna apply it like it's, um, like it's local when it's already relative and it's already doing those calculations for you. So it actually ends up kind of like looping. And when we saw that it's, it's applying it like you're um, not in the world space again, or if you're using the world space by accident. So use vector three dot forward when you're working with rigid body, add relative torque. Then, I'm finding out if we're actually negative or positive. Um, so we're actually gonna you know, rotate the opposite way. And the way I'm doing that is I'm just taking the angle and I'm dividing it by the absolute value of the angle to get either negative one or one. Now, this could end up being zero, but since we're gonna be greater than or equal to one F, we're not calculating it when it is zero. So, shouldn't be an issue with that, but just watch out for that. Then, um, if this, if we fail to meet any of these conditions or either of these conditions um, and we then move we will then move to our YZ angle if it's greater than 1f um, we are going to say um, and really this condition so actually really it could be equal to I don't know why I have this here but if it's greater than 1f or whatnot so this is actually part of it it has to be both of these because when we stop moving all together but if it is greater than 1f and it's not meeting this first condition then obviously um, and it's not meeting this condition, it's not gonna do anything, but if it is meeting this, where it's still greater than one F, and the angle is, you know, is that one degree from Y on the X, Y axis, we're gonna add relative torque vector three dot right times negative torque. So what we're saying is we're actually gonna pitch this, we're gonna pull back, we're gonna start looking up. And also, if the player is above us, we, we have this just, it's firing a weapon. So um, I have a weapon here that I've added, it's an, you know, it's a emitter and it just fires a weapon. So, um, and then that, that weapon is, is determining, you know, oh, um, if it can fire based on its fire rate, things like that. So we're gonna fire the weapon. Um, and we're always, regardless, we're always adding relative force, vector three dot forward times thrust, which I've set to like 80,000 because I have a lot of drag. So, um, even though there's not dragon space, but that's just to kind of give us more control because, you know, well, I have earlier videos that discuss all this. So now if you want to see it again, so here it is. We'll watch all the ships. They'll follow us. And that's about it, really. You can see that their behavior, like they, they will literally be like right there and then they'll start pitching up. And if they pass us, they're all going to pass us. Whoops. Uh, then uh, we'll turn back around and they'll, they'll rotate until they get us back up and then they're gonna pull back and they're all firing at me again. So anyway, um, that is that is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit the like button and I hope to see you next time.